Hey, hello, brothers and sisters. It's Paul here. I have a very harsh message to give you guys. I'm sorry you're going to have to hear it this way, but it's just, it's got to be said. Um, there are a lot of people completely lying to you on these social medias. The things that I'm being shown, they're not being shared by anybody. And <clears throat> I understand now why I have a small channel. I do. I understand now that there are a lot of people that are not Holy Spirit filled. And I realize now what they mean by very people. Many are called. Few will actually hear the message. So, <clears throat> whatever. I said that to say this. I'm sorry I'm sounding harsh. I share only what i'm shown i don't put together stuff like this by watching the news or being influenced by other channels do what you will with what i show you i believe these messages that i put together from the dreams i was shown were shown to me by the lord use your discernment take it to the lord anyway here we go so I had three dreams, and every time I have these type of dreams, my dog starts going crazy in the background, so I apologize for that kind of noise in the back. Misha, Kushtra, sleep, go to bed. All right, so let me just get into the first dream. I've prayed over this. I've went through just incredible spiritual warfare about this, so here we go. So in this first dream, I was at a gathering, and once I got there, I saw there was just an incredible amount of people who were excited about something. I was being pulled in a direction deep inside of a mountain. Now, I will say I'm not sure if this was me. I believe more that I was witnessing this through somebody else's life, somebody else's eyes. So the closer that we got... It was later revealed that this cave entrance, the closer I got to this cave, I knew, I knew somehow it was the entrance to the dragon's den. I was about to enter it to go to fight, and, but suddenly before entering, the cave opened up a huge amount of silver and golden mil minions came out. And even as I'm saying this, I see them but I don't even know what I saw. Like, I don't know what these things were. Um, I realized I couldn't fight alone, so I pulled back, and I jumped on a golden bike, and I drove away from the cave. Now, remember a vehicle, bike, anything like that, for a believer, that's your ministry. For a non-believer, that's your lifestyle. So in this case, it's ministry. Whatever I wanted to fight, I was overwhelmed. I had to get out. So I was back at the gathering and I noticed only the only people left at this gathering were mostly women and young adult children. And I and I and I uh, I tried very hard to go away. I arrived at the street to get a ride. So I, when I say gathering, I almost want you to picture like if anybody, I'll use an American theme park called um, Six Flags. It, it seemed like there was some kind of an activity going on, like a carnival, yet there wasn't a carnival there, if that makes any sense. So moving on. I saw women on four-wheeled carriages in red and white stripes. I asked if I could jump in, but this woman refused me. I got into a four-wheeled carriage vehicle, another one. I began to negotiate the price with the gentleman. Uh, we were we were trying to work distances out. I was just trying to get closer to home, like, and uh, what his roots were to, to get home, you know. And I offered him twenty dollars, and then thirty dollars, and as high as thirty-five for the entire distance home. But he wanted more. I knew he wanted forty dollars. He began to pick up others who joined in arguing with me on the prices. 
They even made fun of me because I knew the driver. He told them to humiliate me. And he made me, he made more money on the way back. I jumped on a golden bike. Sorry, I read that part again. Um, where was I? Uh, okay, so yeah, he made more money off these strangers as we were negotiating. And he continued, but I could have, he goes, I could have made more money if I would have stayed at the park and made these little trips. Anyway, so I woke up at that point. And I looked up these numbers that I saw. So 20 was wild, joy, ecstatic, delight. That was what was happening at the park, I guess. $25 is to love. No, that's what Jesus tells us to do, love your neighbor. 30 is a vessel or a flax. A flask. Um, 35 is without genealogy. And 40 is God, holy, sacred, and set apart. So, I forgot to tell you at the beginning of this. I had this back on December 27th. 2022 i've been praying on this for a long time and i did not understand what it was trying to tell me but i couldn't get this gathering thing out of my head so between then and now i've had a bunch of people from my past suddenly trying to reach out and rehook reconnect on like social medias and that i just thought it was really bizarre one guy was even as far as like 40 years ago and I just don't understand why these people of the past are trying to get a hold of me. So anyways, I continued to pray, continued to pray. Three days ago, the spiritual warfare against me began to get ramped up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I only get that when I'm going to receive a dream. So I didn't write any of these down because they're so vivid in my head. So the second dream was I was witnessing... A very large gathering again but it was in a secret place and I don't even think we were topside I think we were somewhere down somewhere possibly in a cave I don't know um, and it had an amphitheater made of stone I want you to think of like the Roman amph amphitheaters and in the middle it was a circle of stones that people could sit on and stand in front of and I saw a man in the middle of it. So all these people were worshiping and witnessing and watching this person go through ceremonies, which I am now led to believe with the guidance of one of my friends, who you may remember as my friend Dennis. Uh, we run everything by each other. And today he, when I ran this by him, he, he's literally, by the way, before I move on, He's literally the only person that I trust in spiritual discernment on the level I have, if that makes any sense. So needless to say, I know he's Holy Spirit and he's moved by the Holy Spirit and I trust his judgment. So he said he believes that these were probably the Antichrist going through his preparations to come forward in the world because... Like many others are saying, and I, and I don't listen to others, but possibly he's around and he's getting ready to come on the scene. And I think we're very, very close. So I have a third dream and I was really holding back on this one, but the understanding of it came forward today. So I know what it means now. So this, again, this is off the cuff and I could, you know, pull it out and have more detail, but it's unnecessary. So. What I saw is I saw a Jewish man and a Gentile man in a vehicle and they were doing something they shouldn't be doing. And I yelled out, uh, what are you guys doing? And somebody threw something at me. And when I caught it, I heard Torah mitzvah in it. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know these were teachings of Old Testament. I, I had to look it up. I didn't know what it meant. So... I threw it I threw it on the ground cuz I, I thought it was broken for some reason and I said stop what you're doing cuz they were engaging in man on man activities if you know what I mean I couldn't see it but I knew they were doing that and they said mind your own business and, and a rage came over me like you don't know what you're doing you know and 
I heard a voice somewhere in the background. And this is actually a guy I knew in my wrestling days, but he was a tough guy and he mocked everybody and he mocked me. Ah, it's laughable that you're laughable that you're mad because, you know, what are you going to do? And that was the end of the third dream. So I had to look up this Torah mitzvah stuff and it led me to other things. As a Gentile, I did not know there's two different Talmuds. Talmud. I'll put it up and I'll explain. When, when the second temple was destroyed and they were dragged off to Babylon, this is where the 70 elders that were brought to the hill of Mount Sinai when Moses went up, he came back with what later became the Old Testament. The, ten, the five books of the Tanakh there. Well, I didn't know these 70 elders made up a verbal book called the Talmud. Talmud. So I have confusion in this area and I'm admitting this, but supposedly those 70 elders' oral teachings went all the way towards the time of when Jesus came and those people and their teachings became the Pharisees and the scribes. Do you understand? They didn't follow the authority of Moses' Old Testament. It, to them, it was secondary. So anyway, I said all that, the third dream there, to say that there are people in Israel right now following the, the rulings and the teachings of the Babylonian Talmud, not those of the teachings of Moses. So brothers and sisters, take this to prayer, do your research. I literally did not see anybody else talking about this. You can decide what to do with this. I say this to you out of love. And I, I don't know why I'm always chosen to give these types of messages. It's up to you. With your itchy ears, you want to go listen to all those false teachers and false prophets leading you to, you know, all these beautiful messages. And uh, they're not preparing you. They're not preparing you. You understand? You got you to gotta be repenting for everything you do. We all fail every day. You better take this seriously. So, hey, <clears throat> comment whatever you want. This is actually coming out of love, even though you might not think it is. I'm speaking to you the way God speaks to me. And he speaks to me like a father to a son. And he disciplines me. And when we do wrong, you need to recognize it and repent. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a good day.